Check it out. Jerry Norton hitting home runs. When you're on the phone negotiating with a seller, get this out, do some victory swings. Hey, back by popular demand, welcome to another watch me video where you get to look over my shoulder and watch me wholesale and flip real live deals. Now today's part one case study is a house in Park Forest, Illinois. So come with me and see firsthand how I found the deal, analyzed it, and best of all, watch how I secured the contract live on the phone with the seller coming up. For a limited time, you can get a free copy of Jerry Norton's Quick Start Kit with everything you need to flip your first house in 30 days or less. Download it now at myquickstartkit.com. Hey, if you're new here to this channel, I'm Jerry Norton with FlippingMastery.com, and this channel is all about ways to help you make more money flipping real estate so you can live your dream life. Be sure to subscribe and turn on the bell notifications so you don't miss new videos. Now, I've gotten tons of feedback that you guys love these hands-on real deal case studies, so hopefully this video doesn't disappoint. Now keep in mind, this is a deal in Illinois and I live in Arizona, so I'm wholesaling this house virtually or remotely across the country without ever physically seeing the property in person. And in case you're wondering, this is a deal I'm partnering on with one of my elite mentoring students. If you'd like to apply to partner on deals with me so you can earn while you learn, then go to FastTrackWithJerry.com. Okay, now before we dive in, I wanna emphasize something. The last look over my shoulder and watch me video like this, I received a comment that said, Jerry, you make it look so easy. And I wanna address that comment real quick and keep it real if that's okay. I'm showing examples and case studies where things worked out and I'm able to get a deal and put it together. What I'm not showing you are the other 99 offers that were rejected or the deals that fall apart. If you're new and you're thinking this looks so easy, or if you've been trying without success and you're thinking, why does it look so easy for Jerry and not for me? then I want you to know it's not easy for me. Wholesaling and flipping houses isn't easy. Nothing worthwhile ever is. But I will say this, wholesaling and flipping is easier if you have the right tools, training, and mentoring. And then the more you are consistent, take action and implement, the more momentum you create and the easier it gets. And in case you're wondering, the best tool for wholesaling and flipping houses is hands down Flipster. Flipster is a cloud-based deal management system that has everything you need to find and wholesale deals for big profits. To check it out and see it in action, just go to getflipster.com. So as of right now, we have the contract with the seller on this house in Park Forest, Illinois, and I'm gonna show you three things, how we found the deal, how we analyzed the deal, and how we secured the contract with the seller, which I actually recorded live on the phone, which will be a real treat to see, so stick around. And of course, I'll be teaching and explaining everything as I go, so you'll learn with a real live deal and not abstract theory. All right, are you ready? Let's go. First, let's talk about how we found this deal. Inside Flipster, there are multiple lead generation tools, and one of them is the MLS Finder tool. This tool finds underpriced properties for sale on the MLS, or what we call on market. And in case you don't know, on market simply means the seller listed the property for sale with a real estate agent. And despite what most people think, you can wholesale on market properties just the same as off market properties. You just have to go through the agent is all to get the contract with the seller, then you assign your contract just like normal to a cash buyer. So using the MLS deal finder, we set up a campaign or a search in the zip code 60466. This generated a list of underpriced properties and one of the listings was this property on Berry Street. It's a four bedroom, one and a half bath home that is listed as 1,121 square feet, but this is actually inaccurate and it's actually 1,350 square feet. Now, what prompted me to question the square footage was it's not likely to have a four bedroom, one and a half bath home that is only 1,121 square feet, especially since it looks like a two story. This home is actually a tri-level, which means when you walk in the front door, to the right is the main level, but then to the left, it's split. So from the main level, you can take four or five steps and you can go up where there's bedrooms, or you can take four or five steps down and then the lower level is half underground and half above ground, split level. Now split level homes were common during the 50s up through the 70s. This is important and we're gonna come back to this when I cover analyzing the deal. Now without measuring the house, where did I come up with 1350 square feet? I did three things. One, I added up all the rooms that are on the listing. Two, when I talked to the agent, he said the listing square footage did not include the lower level. And three, I found the exact same home that recently sold in the neighborhood that was listed as 1350 square feet. 
Now, why is all of this significant? Because this home has been on the market for nearly two months without selling, and I think the market isn't interested because they think it's smaller than it really is. Always look for the hidden opportunity. Now there are no pictures except this one exterior picture, which doesn't look too bad. So other than Flipster finding this deal for me, you can't tell from looking at it that it's a distressed property. So how did I know that this was a distressed property that would be ideal to wholesale or flip? Here's how. In the property description, it says right here, selling as is, great opportunity for investors and cash buyers. It doesn't get any more clear than that. So using the MLS Finder tool in Flipster, we found this deal. The next step is analyzing the deal to determine the offer price. Inside Flipster, we go to the deal analyzer and Flipster crunches all of the numbers for me. So let's take a look. The after repair value or what it will sell for once it's fixed up is $94 a square foot or $127,000. So watch over my shoulder now as I show you how I calculated the ARV and how you can do this too without needing an agent to pull comps for you. Let's go back to the listing on redfin.com which is a free real estate service. Now you could also use Zillow or Trulia or Realtor.com, but Redfin is my favorite. Now I'm gonna show you my three-step process to look at the comps and determine the after repair value. Step number one is to identify and isolate the neighborhood. To do that, click on the zip code at the very bottom of the listing and then zoom in on the neighborhood and identify a radius that takes in the immediate neighborhood. Maybe like five to 10 blocks is all the closer, the better. Try not to cross any major streets. Using the draw feature, draw a box around just the area you wanna look at. This excludes anything outside the lines. Step two is to add filters to narrow down the results. To do that, click more filters, and first change from for sale to sold homes and go back to one year. Under property type, click homes, so we're only looking at single family homes. Next, let's put a square footage filter. Let's go with a minimum of 1250 and a maximum of 1750, so we're only looking at homes that are similar in size. At this point, we only wanna keep adding filters if we still have too many comps, as this will help narrow down our results even more. Now, I wanna to get to seven to 10 really good comps to look at. So since our house is a four bedroom, let's put a filter for minimum four bedroom. And then let's add one more filter for price. Because we're calculating ARV, we only wanna look at retail comps or nicer homes, so let's put the minimum sold price at 100,000. That'll get rid of any distressed comps. Okay, click apply and it shows here a list of our remaining most relevant comps. And step three is to determine the price per square foot based on the data. What I love about Redfin is it lists right here all of the sold price per square foot. And you can see most of the comps are fairly consistent in the $80 a square foot. There's one at $76 a foot and one at $94 a foot. And if you look right here at the bottom of the list, it gives us the average of our list, which is another reason why I love Redfin. Our average is $83 a foot, which is what I would normally go with. However, I'm actually gonna bump the ARV price per square foot to 94 to match this comp and here's why. If you look at this home, which is like one or two streets away from our home, it is the exact replica of our house. Of all the comps, it's the only tri-level that looks like ours, and in fact, is the exact same house, and it sold for $94 a foot or 127,000. And it's not even rehabbed or that nice, which means we can definitely get $94 a foot, maybe better. Now, I hope that makes sense how I arrived at the ARV. Going back to the deal analyzer and Flipster, you can see my square footage is 1350. My ARV price per square foot, I have at 94, which makes my ARV sale price 127,000. Now, how did I get 25,000 for repairs? Well, this number is a bit of a guess. I spoke to the listing agent and he said, everything that's needed is cosmetic, meaning it doesn't need a new roof or any major capital improvements. So that means it's an average rehab, which is carpet, paint, kitchen and bath, and maybe some other things which Flipster automatically calculates for me. Now, don't worry about the repair number right now. We'll get a contingency with our offer and we'll have time to verify those numbers later after we get the contract. For right now, 25K is a good budget for the rehab. So following the standard 70% less repairs fix and flip formula, a flipper would pay $64,000 for this house. That means if he or she bought it for 64,000, put 25,000 into it, 
they would sell it for $127,000 and make a $19,000 profit. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the fix and flip buy formula, I'll put a link in the description box below, and later you can watch a video where I describe how to do that in detail. So if a flipper will pay 64,000, we need to get it for less than that so that we can make a wholesale fee. And guess what? We ended up getting the contract as of right now for 50,000, which I'll explain, so keep watching. So now that we have all the numbers figured out and we know that we need to be under 64,000 because that is what a flipper will pay, it's time to make the offer and secure the contract. Since this property is on market, we followed my double dip strategy, which is to go directly to the listing agent unrepresented and let him represent us and submit the offer on our behalf. By doing that, he gets both the listing side commission of 3% for being the listing agent and the buyer side of 3% for being our buyer's agent and submitting the offer for us for a combined 6%. That's called dual agency or what I've coined the double dip technique. Now I have an entire video dedicated to this technique you can watch later. I'll put the link to that video in the description box below. In fact, while I was with my Fast Track partners the other day, I called and presented the offer directly to the listing agent, which I captured on video. Now I'm gonna show that to you in a minute where you can watch how I built rapport, what questions I asked, how I offered to double dip with him, and how I presented and made the offer. So we made the offer for 40,000. Shortly after the agent got back with a counter of 53,000. I countered back at 42 or 43,000, and then the seller came back at 50,000 and said that's the lowest they'll go. Now all of that was done over the course of a few hours via texting. So we decided to accept that offer of 50,000, but I told the agent point blank that I needed 10 days inspection contingency to take a look at the house and verify my rehab budget and confirm the actual square footage. Now let me ask you a question. Why would I execute a contract at 50,000 on a house I've never seen, not even pictures? I have no idea what the inside even looks like. Here's why. I have a 10 day inspection clause that gives me plenty of time to send someone over there and double check all of the numbers. And here's the big lesson I want you to take away. Always get the contract first with a contingency, then do your detailed due diligence. If the numbers don't work out during the 10 days, I will renegotiate or terminate the contract, so there's no risk. In fact, I did a video where I show the six steps to renegotiate a contract. I'll put a link to that video in the description box below, and you can watch it later. Okay guys, let's cut to the live call I did with the agent so you can see how I negotiated and made the offer. Now you're gonna get a ton of nuggets from this call, so watch it now, and then I'll come back on. Hi Joe, my name's Jerry Norton. How are you doing today? I'm doing good, how are you? Doing great. Hey, I'm calling about one of your listings. Berry Street, is that still available? Yes, it is. Great, so I'm an investor. I'd like to put an offer in. The way that I work, Joe, is we we would let you submit the offer for us so we're unrepresented, and that way you you know could get the buyer side as well. Is that uh, something you're willing to do? Yeah, you have to do that better. Okay. So you get it. We'd like to build a long-term relationship with you. That way, when you get stuff like this, you, you can let us know. We can work with you, try to get deals done and let you submit the offers for us. So, you know, anytime you get a listing like this, give us a call. We'd love to put an offer in, see if we can get some deals done. So let's put an offer in. Do you want to, I mean, I, I really need to be like down a little bit. Let's go in at 40 cash. The place is available to go see at whenever. I yeah. Know, you okay. And then you can go take a look for yourself as far as the square footage. Awesome. Hey, yeah, I mean, typically we just do a 30 day closing. That gives us plenty of time to get our rehab okay. figured out and our funds together and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, so if we could do a 30, 30 day, what, a 500 EMD, is that fine? Yep, that, that, that'd be completely fine. Okay, and then if we could just have a, um, you know, typically like a 10 day inspection, that gives me plenty of time to just double check all that stuff. Yeah, so let's do that. Awesome. Well, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll take that verbal offer over my client, and uh, this number right here is the best one to get in touch with you. If I can't get a hold of him by tonight, worst case scenario, I'll be back in touch with you by tomorrow morning. But uh, if I can't get you an answer by tonight, I will. Okay, so and that's how it's done, swinging home runs. As of right now, we have the contract for 50000 Does that number work? Can we wholesale it and make a profit? I don't know. Time will tell. So if you found a real deal, look over my shoulder and watch me video like this one helpful. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, like this video and leave a comment and let me know. I value your feedback and I would love to hear from you. And in the meantime, be sure to watch this next video where I show a real live deal example where I find a cash buyer. You're gonna love it. If you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe. I'm dedicated to help you make money flipping houses so you can live your dream life. And I'll see you on the next video.